this should have been an easy flight. A scenic trip through the mountains on a gorgeous day. And then this. Warning. So it's in 491 traffic, Mayfield Airborne. Terrain. Caution. Terrain. Terrain. Caution. Terrain. Terrain. Number five, Bravo Zulu, start your left turn when able, traffic, six mile final opposite direction. How did we get here? Aspen's a short flight from our home base of Denver Centennial. Driving takes about four or five hours, depending on traffic, but flying, only 45 minutes. The weather looks fine. The winds on arrival are forecast out of 260 at four knots. And while well, the wind favors runway 33, Aspen's operational flow prefers a straight into runway 15 if we're able. And a four knot tailwind is well within our capabilities. So that's the plan. A fast flight into Aspen, arriving on runway 15. Bose is one of our sponsors, and we thought this flight would highlight communication, which is kind of the purpose of a headset, right? And as things turned out, we ended up with a little more communication than we planned on. We've purchased four of the A20s with Bluetooth. The a &R works well and they're comfortable, even when wearing a mask and sunglasses. The mask, on the other hand, nah. But my favorite feature is the Bluetooth. When I couple my headset to my iPad, I get four flight alerts through the Bose A20, which is really a big deal. I've always found navigating in the air much easier than navigating on the ground, and I really like the runway incursion warnings from ForeFlight. Approaching runway 17 left, 35 right. Plus, I get cabin altitude warnings when I climb above 12,500. And since we're on oxygen for most of our flights, I really like the reminder. The flight's fast. Even with a headwind, we're picking up 146 knot ground speed. And as we approach funds, the last fix before Aspen, I'm starting to eye the weather. We're about 46 nautical miles out, and with the mountains, that means we won't pick up ATIS until we're closer. This is where ADS-B or XM weather comes in. I had the latest Aspen METAR, and the winds have picked up from 360 degrees at 9 knots. That tailwind component is higher than I wanted, and close to our limit of 10. While landing on 3-3 isn't the airport's preferred option, it's starting to look like the best choice. And then we start to pick up ATIS. It's still pretty far out, so it's coming through pretty weak. But that's one of the advantages of A&R. It can pull down the engine noise. Aspen Tower information, Quebec, 1853 Zulu, wind 350 at 9er, gust 1-6, visibility 1-0, sky clear below 1-2000, temperature 7, dew point minus 6, top temperature 3 Zero. Use caution, runway 15, strong tailwind conditions exist. That's not what you want to hear. Strong tailwind conditions exist. So now landing on runway 15 is looking pretty risky. Tailwinds may be one of the least understood risks in general aviation. You can handle a lot of headwind, but even a CRJ has a 10 knot tailwind limit. First, your ground speed on approach is faster with a tailwind, and that means you need a faster descent rate to hold your approach angle. With a 10 knot headwind and an 85 knot final approach speed, we'll descend at 400 feet per minute on a normal 3 degree glide slope. Spin that around to a 10 knot tailwind, and we need a 500 foot per minute descent rate. Plus, we're landing at 7,800 feet, which means we're flying a higher true airspeed, roughly 15% faster than our airspeed indicator reads. As we round out into our flare, we need to slow down that descent rate, which is already tough enough. But as we enter the flare, friction from the ground will slow down that tailwind. We'll feel like we're gaining a little headwind, which will make us float and possibly balloon. And on this high altitude landing, we're already touching down 15% faster than normal. And that's why so many landings that end up off the end of the runway start with a tailwind. Aspen's runway is long, 8,000 feet, which helps us manage that risk. But all of these problems also increase the chance of losing directional control, which again makes you ask the question, why would you ever land with this tailwind? Right, we won't. We have a couple of outs. First, we'll ask for runway 33, and most of the time at Aspen, you'll get it. If traffic's too tight and ATC can't accommodate us, we can head over to Eagle. It's about 25 miles away to the north, and the airport's much more open. A headwind landing there is no problem. But first, ask. Aspen approach, November 333, Alpha November. November 333, Alpha November, Aspen approach, go ahead. 333, Alpha November is 20 miles northeast of the Red Table VOR. We're wondering if we can get a uh, approach for runway 33 in Aspen. November 333, Alpha November, Roger, you can expect that. Ask, 
and you shall receive. The arrival into Aspen can be a little intimidating, but it doesn't get much more stunning. We'll head towards the Red Table VOR. It's a landmark often used by Aspen Approach. It sits on the first of two ridges, this one's Red Table Mountain. As you cross, you should be about 12,500 feet. The mountain reaches 11,500 to 12,000 feet, so you feel pretty close when you're coming over. Then you head for Rudai Reservoir. Aspen Tower Series 333, Alpha November is over Rudai, inbound for runway 33. November 33, Alpha November Aspen Tower, report entering downwind. Or report downwind 33, Alpha November. And then over the second ridge and into the Roaring Fork Valley, and you should have Aspen in sight. As we join the downwind, you realize that 9,000 foot pattern altitude isn't as high as it sounds, and that hill to our left, I'm getting the feeling that if we tap the brakes, we'd slow down. Regardless of the terrain, there's one advantage to flying a pattern, standard configurations. So flaps down to 50% and we slow to 100 knots. We're expecting a smooth base to final and an easy landing. November 3, Alpha November, proceed to the city of Aston and hold until further advice. And that. Hold until advised, 3 Alpha November over Aston. Hold over the city, which Swain coolly points out the issue. That's like tight, what the heck? It is, so let's get ready to add some power in there. I hadn't considered that today is President's Day, one of the busiest weekends in ski country, which means that my opposite direction landing is screwing up their flow. So I have to circle until they can find a gap. Normally circling over the city is frowned upon. The biggest reason is noise. Aspen likes its peace and quiet, and they do get a lot of traffic, even on a normal day, so they ask you to avoid the city. But when ATC needs to park you in the sky, the city's a close spot. From a flying perspective, there are some other concerns, like terrain, which by now you've probably picked up on. If we had a significant wind, even 20 knots would do, we could find some wicked up and down drafts in the valley, which would make holding even more dangerous. Lucky for us, today isn't too windy. So should we climb? 9,000 feet puts us pretty close to that terrain, and the perspective system won't let us forget about it. Warning. Terrain. Caution. Terrain. Terrain. Climbing up would make a landing more difficult. We only have a short base to final to make it down from pattern altitude to the runway, which is about 1,100 feet. And from the sound of the radios, we're not going to have a lot of time to make that approach. So we need to stay in position. Our flaps are still down at 50%, so should we pull them up? In this case, no. We'll fly at 100, and leaving our flaps down gives us a wide margin on our stall speed. Plus, we've got plenty of power, and any faster than 100 knots would make those turns a little too tight for my taste. So, for now, we just need to keep a close eye on the terrain. Caution. 3 Alpha November, terrain. enter right base terrain. runway 33. Right base 33, 3 Alpha November. The arrival's pretty textbook. Swain flies a smooth base to final, lines up, and makes a nice touchdown. On centerline, like a pro. On Taxi Out, we really get the full picture of how busy this airport is. Falcons, Challengers, Gulfstreams, they're stacked three deep on the ramp. So you have to ask, was landing on runway 33 a good idea? Or should we have taken runway 15 like everyone else? Being busy doesn't change the tailwind. And we're not a Challenger, we're a Cirrus. High traffic shouldn't pressure us into making a bad decision. Either the winds needed to die down, or we needed to go somewhere else. ATC worked their magic here. They found a way to accommodate us. And if they couldn't, we would have made a video about diverting and landing at Eagle.